What's up YouTube? Welcome to the NoiseReduction.com YouTube channel. My name is Booker Edwards and in this video I'm going to be unboxing my brand new Novation Launchpad Pro Mark III. Let's check it out. So as I stated in the intro, this is my Novation Launchpad Pro Mark III. I emphasize that because the Launchpad Pro Mark III did not just come out. It actually was released uh, sometime around March of this year, right around the same time we went into quarantine here in the United States. However, I didn't purchase the Launchpad Pro at that time because I'm not an Ableton user. And as you can see right here on the box, it says the production and performance grid for Ableton Live. But in May of this year, Logic Pro updated to 10.5 and it included something called Live Loops, which featured a workflow very similar to the Ableton Live workflow. If you're interested in an overview of the latest update of Logic Pro, you can check it out here in this link. So when Logic updated to 10.5, they also announced a partnership with Novation and utilizing the Launchpad series as a controller for the Live Loops feature in Logic Pro. However, the Launchpad Pro was not supported at that time, only the Launchpad Mini and the Launchpad X. So I actually purchased a Launchpad X at that time. So about a month ago, Logic updated to 10.6, and in 10.6, they advanced the integration of the Launchpad series with Logic Pro, and they added support for the Launchpad Pro. So I sold my Launchpad X and purchased this Launchpad Pro specifically because it has more features and more uh, buttons on the tactile surface to control Logic. So in this video, I'm going to unbox it. I haven't opened it up yet. I'm anxious to see how it integrates with Logic, but I'm gonna unbox it, see what's included in the box, um, connect it to the computer, turn it on, and maybe look at the sequencer that's built in, which is one of the features that's in the Pro that's not in the X or the Mini. And in a later video, I'll connect it to Logic and show you how it integrates with Logic 10.6. But for now, let's just get to opening this up. It's quite a bit heavier than the uh, Launchpad X that I had, and the box is significantly bigger than that box. Um, on the box, it tells you the feature sets and things that's available in it, um, but it talks specifically about Ableton. It's still designed and works very well with Ableton Live. So you see it says our deepest Ableton Live integration, uh, 64 sensitive RGB pads, uh, large velocity and pressure sensitive pads for playing your sounds expressively, um, powerful four track sequencer. That's something that I'm really interested in. So this in and of itself, without the computer or without any software, has a built in sequencer. So you can use it to sequence software or or your external hardware. And I have quite a bit of external uh, synthesizers and rack mount modules that I would love to um, see how this works with that. Um, chord mode, which is something else that this has that the X and the Mini don't. Uh, so chord mode makes it easy to explore, build, save and play complex chords straight from the grid and quickly find new harmonies. Uh, dynamic note and scale modes, MIDI in, out, and through, and eight custom modes. Cool, so let's uh, get it out of the box here. Let's see. Slide. Floor. Okay, so when you get here, it says your Launchpad Pro experience starts here. Okay, so this is showing how you connect it to the computer and go to the uh, Novation.com site to register it. So I need to register this. Uh, but if we crack this open, there it is. Let's take it out. This is uh, safety instructions. This, uh, no, nothing else under there. Well. So all the power cords and stuff are neatly housed under this uh, under the directions. So this looks like a USB-C uh, cable. 
cool. And here's a USB C to USB A. Uh, so it has cables uh, to be able to connect to whatever kind of USB port you would have on your laptop. I have um, a MacBook Pro, so I have USB C on mine. And because this is USB C to USB A, I'm going to assume that this, uh, the actual device has a USB C connection on it. Oh, and it's got uh, some MIDI jacks here. These are cool. I'm familiar with these from um, my NPCs. Uh, actually, my NPC Studio uh, has these uh, MIDI jacks to uh, five pin uh, MIDI connectors. And that's what this has. It's got three of them. I guess one for in, out, and through. To the side. Else there. Uh, it's got a um, hmm, what's this? Power brick. Okay, with a USB A connection on it, and different connections for different countries. So, I guess it's bus powered USB, or it can because it has a standalone sequencer. It also has power, so you can just plug it into a uh, AC jack, and you don't have to have it connected to a computer. So. That's cool. Let me put this back in here. I won't need this right now. And so here it is. The Novation Launchpad Pro Mark III, uh, which I assume is the, makes it the third iteration of it. Um, this is the first one that I've ever owned. Um, quite honestly, I'm not very used to this type of workflow, this 64 pad uh, grid that's um, more associated with the Ableton Live. I use the um, Ableton Push a couple of times uh, when working with Ableton Live. I actually brought one and sent it back because I'm, I'm so accustomed to the MPC workflow and sequencer and just the 16 pads and multiple banks um, that these small pads feel a little foreign to me. Um, but I'm determined to get accustomed to using them because I want to use it with the new workflow and logic. Partly because I think it's going to bring out some new creative ideas and, and ways to think about creating and arranging in logic. Um, but also just because I need to be aware of how these things are working because I'm a certified trainer in Logic Pro and this is now part of that workflow. So I want to be familiar with it. And um, so I went ahead and invested in this. Right off the, the bat, um, it's, it's made with, it feels like a hard plastic. Um, it feels, it's got a little bit of weight to it. It feels uh, feels like it's well made. It's, it's not metal or anything like that, uh, which I wouldn't assume that they would in, for just a controller. Um, it's got a nice orange rubberized uh, bottom here, it's kind of which kind of acts as feet for it to keep it from sliding as you're producing on it and maybe playing your track, so that's cool, keeping it in place. Uh, on the back of it here, or on the top, let's see, can you see that? It has a USB-C port, and then it has the uh, MIDI um, out, MIDI, MIDI in, out, and through back here, so that's for those little jacks there. Um, and it's got a lot of different controls on it. It's not lit up, so these pads, I'm gonna have to get used to these pads to be honest with you, but I've seen people do like some really cool stuff with it, finger drummers, which I'm not. Um, but I like the idea of being able to play uh, the chords and also uh, playing things in scale on here and using it as a, a very different type of keyboard for playing in melodies and things. So let's hook it up to get some power to it, turn it on and see what all of these buttons are. So while I was off camera, I went ahead and registered my Launchpad Pro Mark III at the NovationMusic.com forward slash register website. And uh, right now I have it in what's called Vegas mode. And in Vegas mode, uh, all the lights light up and they change colors and all the buttons on the hardware light up. 
And that's um, the default behavior. If you leave it alone for five minutes and don't touch it, it will go into Vegas mode. You can set that so it doesn't happen if you like, um, and I think it's pretty cool. And actually right now it's really helpful because I'm, I'm going to go over the hardware to show you what all the buttons are um, on the Launchpad Pro Mark III. So I'm going to start at the top and go from left to right. Uh, so the first button you see at the top is the access shift button. You'll notice on some of the buttons that there are multiple functions. Um, there's a secondary function uh, named at the bottom of the button. And to access that function, you're going to need to hit or hold the shift key and then hit that button. And then you'll get the secondary function. Uh, but next to the shift button, you have two arrows. Those are your navigational buttons. You also see two arrows below the shift button going down on the left side. Those are also navigational buttons. Continuing to the right of the navigational buttons across the top, you have your mode buttons. And you have six modes on the uh, Launchpad Pro Mark III. You have session mode, note mode, chord mode, custom mode, sequencer mode, and projects mode. And you'll see the secondary function on the projects button is save. So that's how I could save uh, my projects here. Because remember this has its own standalone sequencer. Um, let's go down on the left side under shift. Again, you have your navigational buttons. Then you have the clear button. You have the duplicate button. The secondary function is double. You have the quantize button. The secondary function is record quantize. Uh, you have the fixed length button, you have the play button, you have the record button, and the secondary function is capture MIDI. And then under that, which you don't see, um, is because it's not lit up, but there's actually a button there, it's the setup button. And the setup button is where you can go in and change your settings and turn off things like Vegas mode if you like. Let's go over to the right hand side under the Novation logo. And the buttons that you see here are the scene launch buttons or the sequencer buttons. The secondary function is for uh, the sequencer. And if you're in the sequencer mode, then the first button allows you to go into patterns. The next one goes into steps. The next one goes into pattern settings. The next one goes into velocity for the patterns. The next one goes into probability for the patterns. The next one goes into mutation for the patterns. The next one goes into micro steps for the patterns. And the next one goes to print to clips. Otherwise, those buttons are scene launch buttons. Across the bottom, you have your eight track select buttons. And then beneath that, you have uh, record arm. Secondary function is undo. You have mute. The secondary function is redo. You have solo. The secondary function is click. You have volume, pan, send, and send. Uh, the secondary function is tap. You have device. The secondary function is tempo and you have stop clip, and the secondary function is swing. Uh, so again, that's just a quick overview of the buttons that you have available on the hardware for the Launchpad Pro Mark III. Again, if I uh, wake it up, it'll get out of uh, Vegas mode, and I'll show you quickly how you can access that Vegas mode to turn it on or turn it off. If you hold down setup, then your track buttons. The first five here give you access to different settings for the launch pad. So for instance, um, the first track button puts you in LED. You can see that the uh, pads spell out LED. And here you can turn off or turn on Vegas mode. That's what that button right there is for. And this is where you can adjust the um, brightness of the LEDs. So you can see I can turn them down. They kind of get brighter or dimmer as I go here. It was on max there. And then you have velocity settings, um, aftertouch settings, MIDI settings, and pad settings um, by holding setup here. I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to Logic and maybe peek at the sequencer real fast to see how that works. Okay, so let's take a look at the built-in sequencer in the Launchpad Pro Mark III. First thing we need to do is go into sequencer mode. And once you're in sequencer mode, you can see your steps. These light blue pads across the top represent the steps in your sequence. If I start play, you'll see the playhead basically go across the step sequencer. 
The sequencer actually has four tracks and you can access those tracks with the track buttons down here at the bottom. So in the first track, you see I'm in the first track, this section down here is set up for a drum grid uh, to be able to play drums. If I go to track two, you'll see it's able to play keys, track three and track four, right? They are differentiated by their colors, pink, green, blue, and this orange. And each uh, sequence or each track actually has uh, a set of patterns. So if I go here under patterns, you'll see these orange represent track one. So you have eight patterns for track one, you have eight patterns for track two, eight patterns for track three, and eight patterns for track four. And then you can actually kind of link those uh, patterns together to make a scene. And these are your scenes down here at the bottom. I won't get into all of that in this video because it's really just an unboxing, but I just want to demonstrate the sequencer. And so I'm going to go back to steps so you can see steps and I'm on track one. So what I have in Logic is two software instrument tracks set up. The first track is a drum kit uh, called Heavy Bass House. And the second track is a rhythmic synthesizer called Classic House Sequence. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sequence the drums on track one and then on track two, which I can get to by hitting this, I'm going to sequence the rhythmic synth. But I'm going to start with track one. And as you can see, under the steps in the sequencer, I have an orange drum grid here that will trigger the drum sounds on my drum kit. Right? So in order to make this work, there's some things I need to do in Logic to make Logic listen to the different tracks. And the different tracks in the sequencer, tracks one, two, three, and four, they actually send out different MIDI channels. And that's what allows them to trigger different sounds in Logic or any other MIDI device that's receiving the MIDI from it. So just by default, uh, track one is sending MIDI channel one, track two is sending MIDI channel two, track three is sending MIDI channel three, and track four is sending MIDI channel four. So in Logic, I need to tell the drum track that I only wanted to listen to MIDI channel one and the synth track that I only wanted to listen to MIDI channel two. Otherwise, when I go to the second track and start playing, it will play the drums and the synth because they, they're set by default in most softwares. They're set by default to listen to all incoming MIDI information. That's why anytime you connect a MIDI controller to um, your DAW and you start playing, it'll play whatever instrument that's armed on whatever track because it's listening to all the MIDI channels no matter what. So to do that in Logic, First thing I need to do is go into my project settings. The shortcut for that is option P. And once you go into your project settings, you want to go to the record tab. So if you're not in the record tab, you want to click on, it's actually the recording tab, go to the recording tab. And under this subcategory of MIDI here, you want to make sure that there's a check in the box that says auto demix by channel if multi-track recording. By default, it's unchecked. So you want to put a check there. Now, um, your project settings in Logic are exactly that. They are the settings for this project that you're working in. If you create a new project or you open up a different project, those settings don't apply to that project. Um, preferences, on the other hand, when you set a preference in Logic, that's something that you prefer and that will be available to you in all projects going forward. But project settings, option P to get to project settings, this only applies to this particular project. If I create a new project I need to make the same setting if I'm going to do the same thing. So once I've done that, then I'm going to select the first track, which is the drum track, and I need to tell this track to listen only to MIDI channel one. To do that, I'm going to go over here to the track parameters. Um, you have region parameters here, and then you have track parameters. So I'm going to click on this disclosure triangle beside track parameters. And here where it says MIDI channel, you see it says all, so it's listening to all MIDI channels. So in other words, if I go to uh, track two, which is sending MIDI channel two, notice it's playing the drums also, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna tell the drums to only listen to MIDI channel one. And then I'm gonna go and do the same thing to the synth track, but on this one, under the uh, track parameters, I'm gonna set the MIDI channel to MIDI channel two. I'm going to go back and select 
uh, my first track and you'll see that it's armed. And then I'm going to arm ready my second track. And now if I play the drum kit, it's playing, sending MIDI to that channel. It's not affecting the second channel, but if I go to track two, you see it's actually sending MIDI to the second track. So it's separating that MIDI and it's listening on the separate channels inside of Logic. So now I'm basically ready to program. So I'm gonna throw on my headphones real fast. And I'm gonna go back to track one. Now before I start the sequence, um, one thing that you're probably going to want to do is set the tempo of your sequence. So to set the tempo on the Launchpad Pro, you hold down Shift and hit Tempo here. And when you do that, you'll see the tempo come up on the, L on the pads, the LEDs to show you the tempo. And you see the default tempo is 120, which is the default tempo for most DAWs also, right? So um, I'm going to set this to 126. So you can go up or down with these buttons here to change the tempo. Uh, let's do 130. I'm gonna get out of that, so that's set. Now, however, because I have a rhythmic synth, this synth right here, that synth, the, the tempo of that rhythm that you're hearing is actually tied to the tempo of Logic. And Logic is not slaving to the tempo of this sequencer, so I need to set Logic's tempo to 130 so that it will match the tempo here. So I'm going to go into Logic and double click on the tempo and type in 130, hit return. Um, now of course, uh, there are ways to send uh, synchronized two sequencers so that the tempo of one uh, slays the tempo of the other one, um, but that's beyond this particular video tutorial. So um, I have them both set to 130. I'm gonna go back to track one, and I'm gonna start playing. You'll see the playhead move through the steps, and I'm gonna start programming in my drum pattern. Now, in order to add uh, a drum sound to the steps, you just hold down the sound that you want. So I want this kick and I'm gonna do a four on the floor. So I'm gonna hold that kick and just put this here and here to give me my four on the floor kick. And then there's another kick that I'm gonna add and I'm gonna add it to kind of accent that kick, every other kick. And um, let's see, let's add this clap in here. Add a snare. Let's add this over here too. find a hi-hat. Okay, let's add that hi-hat. I think I got an open head on here I'm going to use. So now I've got the drum pattern in here, kind of like I want it, right? And if I want to add in the synths, all I have to do is go to track two and I can add in the synth. So I'm going to play a, a chord with the synth that sounds like this. But this time, instead of um, programming it to the step, I'm going to program it in in real time while it's playing back by just playing it and I'm gonna kind of overdub it in there. To do that, all I have to do is hold down or hit record here to add it. So I'm gonna start playback. Going to record. Well, let me make sure I got it right first. Yep, here we go. Going to record. I'm 
let's see if we got it in there. It comes back around here. And just that simple, I've created a sequence inside of this. Now, notice when I play this, the sequence in Logic is, is not doing anything. The, the playhead in Logic's not moving. This is all in here. All the MIDI is in here. Of course, if I wanted to add additional tracks uh, for tracks three and four in Logic, I would just create new software instrument tracks. And of course, on that track, I would have to change the MIDI from all to three. And then if I did another track here, I changed that MIDI from uh, all to four. And then on those tracks, they would play those. You have to select this arm all of the tracks ups like that so now if I go to track four it's playing those keys down there right so I think it's pretty cool like to have that sequencer built into the launchpad pro um, an external sequencer so I, I could take this and not have it connected to the computer at all. Um, I utilize Logic to demonstrate this because I could capture the screen a little bit easier and show you kind of what's going on there. But even with my um, external sound modules that I have in my studio, my like old school rack mount modules that I've had for years, I could connect this with the uh, MIDI out ports here to the five pin den to the, that old school MIDI connection to those devices and it works the same way, it's still MIDI. So on those devices, I could put them in um, a multi-mode, meaning they'll listen to multiple MIDI channels, and then have this send those four separate MIDI channels, and on that device, tell it to, on one channel to listen to MIDI channel one, another one, MIDI channel two, MIDI channel three, and MIDI channel four. You can actually go into this and tell it to be different MIDI channels if you need to, uh, because all devices don't necessarily have the same MIDI channels available, um, but that's, again, above and beyond this particular video. But I think this is is really dope, and I'm, I'm looking forward to figuring out how to kind of program this way and see if it adds something or brings out some different uh, creative ideas in me uh, because this is definitely a different workflow than I'm used to. But I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, hooking it up to Logic and seeing how it integrates and what that workflow is like um, and how I utilize it as I go forward. As always, I appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and of course, click on the bell so you'll be notified when I upload new content. And please share the video on your networks and with your friends. Again, I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.